So let us now look at the features of Victorian criticism. We already saw that Victorian criticism aimed at salvaging uh, the society of its times and in trying to reconcile with the conflict between faith and doubt on the other. So, uh, and it was also a reaction to uh, the previous uh, uh, generation's romantic age or romantic movement and the whole literary style of the romantic, uh, romantic writers and critics. And in uh, the Victorian age and Victorian criticism reflected or represented a passion for law and order. There was an element of realism and matter of factness in the criticism. And it gave a lot of importance to historical and biographical context for evaluating a work of art. So unlike in the Romantic age, where the critic exercised complete autonomy and freedom to evaluate a work of art, in the Victorian age, the critic had to go back to set standards or set parameters of critical evaluation. So it was no longer impressionism to that extent. At least if we look at the Victorian age, it can be divided into three phases, especially Victorian criticism. So you have the early phase, the middle phase, and the later, late Victorian phase. Now, in the early and the middle phase, you definitely find a very strict adherence to tradition and morality, uh, which kind of lessens in the late Victorian phase. So, uh, so you, uh, one can say that uh, romantic and rationalist trains kept locking horns during this age. So both of them coexisted, but they were also often in conflict. Uh, so it was always the abstract, traditionalist and scientific approach of the early and middle Victorians versus, versus the aesthetic and impressionistic approach of the late Victorians. Uh, Macaulay, Carlyle, John Stuart Mill were some of the critics of the early Victorian phase who were succeeded by the likes of Arnold and Ruskin, um, who are supposed to be the critics of the middle Victorian age. And they espoused a critical attitude which um, propounded the ideology or idea of uh, art for life's sake. So art needs to have moral values. Art needs to reflect life's realities. Uh, whereas in the late Victorian phase, you have uh, writers and critics like o Oscar Wilde and Walter Pater, who advocated the whole idea of art for art's sake. And they were more into the aesthetics and the impressionistic uh, potential of art.